Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to get our footage ready for chroma keying and we're going to use the free program Blender. We're going to use version 2.69 even though uh, version 2.71 is available but I have 2.69 is what I have on my puppy Linux system so let's go to do this and in the 2.71 it has all the features we need the same as in this one. So first off we click anywhere to get rid of the splash screen and go down to this button here which is going to give us the possibility of going to video sequence editor and this is where we can edit our video it's a full blown editor and this is where we're going to do our prep. Down here in there are three buttons click the rightmost one and it will give us a preview screen if you have OpenGL installed. Now there's a couple of things that you need to consider before you input your footage. If you select the arrow and open up your properties window here, you'll see two things that we need to check. One is the resolution. It's set at 50% by default. When you export, it's going to make it half the size of your video parameters here. And then you can change your parameters, but let's put it up to full so it will export to the full 1920 by 1080 HD footage when we do come to exporting it. By default the frame rate is at 24 frames per second. If you have 24 frames a second that's fine, just leave it there. But we're going to be working with the 29.97 because we have NTSC. Now something ha funny happens if you leave it at 24 frames a second. If I go to the 29 frames a second and go down to this bottom bar to the add button and go to movie and go and find my movie footage, it will be for example this one here it will be fine it's as you can see the green is the audio on top and right clicking will select it and the bottom is the video if you open up the side panel here by clicking on this little plus button here or dragging it open you have a properties panel for this window you will see the length of it is 178 frames and that's all very fine the audio and video are the same if we close that, we can right click on that, delete, erase the strip, and what happens if we put it, leave it at 24 frames a second, something odd happens. We go and find that piece of footage, add the movie, and you'll find now that the audio is the same, but the video has gone and gone funny. It says it's 178 frames, but it is actually longer because the Blender program is interpreting the 29.97 frames per second at the speed of a 24 frames a second, and it stretches it an extra 6 frames per second so that it's given us a dis an, a, a phasing problem here. So make sure you set that at the right frame rate before you even import it. There's a funny one also where if we set it to the 29.97 frames a second and add my camera's footage which is an AVC HD HD camera, the format native to that camera is an M2TS. If I open that, Blender has a little bit of a difficult time interpreting it because it interprets the fields as frames and so it has 30 frames, well 29.97 frames per second but it is 30, roughly 30 frames a second so we've got 60 fields a second so it interprets the fields as 60 frames per second so it is out of phase. And it's even worse if I import the one at the wrong frame rate, like the 24 frames a second, and import that movie again, you will find that it is not only twice the length, but that 24 frames uh, frame rate difference. So you want to make sure that you're going to leave that at the right frame rate at least, and then to fix the situation if you have the same problem as me, you can import that movie clip and find that it's twice the length. We can fix that in the export by going over to your properties wi uh, window and there is a preference here with time remapping. If I select 100 frames there and 
as a starting and 50 frames on the output. It will then render it at half the speed. It doesn't show up here, but it will render out. If I was to render it at this full rate, it reckons it's got 451 frames, when in actual fact it only has uh, half of that. If I select the audio, you'll find there's 226 frames. If I render it at the full 451, I will get 226 frames good and 226 frames of black. So I'm going to render it at the full length of uh, only 226 frames and I'm going to enter it down here 226 frames and it will show up here I'm going to start my render at frame 1 end my render at 226 frames and that will give me the full uh, 226 with that remapping to fix up that disphasing there in the M2TS footage now, if you don't have that problem, you don't need to worry about this. So let's just go back and import that movie clip, which was an MPEG-4 that I rendered some of that footage out to, and set my mapping back to 100 to 100. I've got everything else the same. At the moment, we now have a frame length of 178, so I'm going to change that to 178 frames that I'm going to work with. Um, you notice that I'm not starting at zero. That seems something funny with the version that it doesn't put your footage onto zero. So I can either right-click and drag that footage to wherever we need to, or we can select then and go G key and move it down further. Right click that G and I can zoom in by dragging this bar down the bottom here and G and put it down to frame one and that one also G and frame one. Now we're ready to go. If we go to the end here we're going to be at 179, 178 frame, and we have our preview up here. Now we're almost ready to go. This footage here on my camera is interlaced footage, and when I export my footage, it's going to be having those horrible little comey effects, and so I want to de interlace it. By selecting the video one here, right clicking on it, I have in my properties panel here, which you can then close or open like that. It's got de interlace. I can tick that box and Blender will de interlace it on export. Now, to export, I'm going to export to an image sequence. Blender will do chroma keying with raw footage, but I prefer to use an image sequence because you can use as many passes as you like and it's easier on older computers. I'm using some Pentium 4s with only 5 gigs of hard drive space so I can get old computers doing some useful work still. I'm going down here to this output box here and you can export to these different video formats and here are the image sequence formats. TIFFs, Open, EXRs, Targas and PNGs are all lossless. The PNG I'm going to use because it's got transparency, I like the file format, and if I put the compression here up to 100% it's going to be, give me a pretty much lossless sequence so that I can do various passes with it. I'm going to go to this button and navigate to where I want to save my video footage, and I'm going to create a new directory to put that image sequence into, create a new directory and give it a name. I usually give it the name of the footage I'm working with, go into it, and also give it a prefix, and it's going to sequence the numbers after that. I usually give it the number of the file that I'm working with. You can give it any name you like, something that's short preferably, so you don't get humongously long names, and accept that. And I also, for sub subsequent uh, passes, I give it an A, B, C, D, so I don't get confused which pass I'm working with. So let's double check that our parameters are okay. We've got our footage in, we're on zero. We have got the length of it. It's starting at one, ending at 178, which is reflected here. We're 100% resolution. Our time remapping we haven't changed. We're down to our output to our, where we're going to send it, the format we're going to send it in, making sure it's at 100%. And we've also clicked the de-interlace okay. So we are now ready to export. 
go up to animation button here on your properties panel and click that and now it will start to crunch through doing it frame by frame and if we go to that folder which is here you can see it's starting to crunch through making those s images for the image sequence usually this one is only a half a meg but they can be up to two or three megs each depending on what's in the video and so therefore you're going to need about a gig per 10 seconds or something like that so you're going to need a fair amount of space I'm using some old Pentium 4s with 5 gigs of, uh, of hard drive and dedicated specifically to this work so they, that's all I need and I just do a shot at a time and then save them off onto another computer so there we are we have it rendering and in the next tutorial we'll look at starting the chroma keying and preparing this footage which you can see is not a good shot taken four years ago when we didn't know what we were doing particularly so we can still get a good key out of that and let's go to the next tutorial see you then